Hello and welcome to another voice fill line tutorial. In this video I want to create the simplest possible actions and considerations. As you know, if you have the package, we already have this demo which I have opened here, which basically contains complex utility AI behaviors and in the code has complex actions and considerations. Further, actions which have targets and for example a tree chopping action which finds it a good target for a tree and then chops it and considerations for those but I want to create something very simple as a getting started. So what I will do is that I would create the simplest possible action and consideration. So an action is basically what the character does and the utility AI algorithm the way it works is that it calculates the score of all actions and then chooses the best action with the best score or if you have another selection mode then other like choose between the top three or top four to create an action you what you do is basically you derive from the class You can use the namespace at the top, and I didn't even need this because I was in the same sub namespace of that namespace, but I just wanted to show you what the namespace is. We can press F12 and see the source code of the action class if you want to, uh, but you don't need to. There are only a few methods to override, so let's say we want to just print a text. Let's define a public variable which tells us what the prefix is. Let's set the default value to empty. And then whenever this action is executing, so on update, we have late update and fixed update as you can see, and those are like unities. We will just print this prefix and then the current time and if you have stuff which we need to do only once when the object uh, like game object with the action is added we have uninitialized so let's say for example we want to get the render of the object that we are attached to say okay the, give me the brain component it, which I am attached to and then get the mesh render and we need to implement update targets even if we don't need to use it because it's abstract if you don't need it for an action, so the action doesn't require a target, simply leave it blank. And what, another thing that we want to do, we want to like, in the start, so whenever an action is selected, we want to change the color of the object that we are attached to. Based on the prefix. So if the prefix, let's say, contain the word, the letter N, we want to use the color red, otherwise the color blue. This happens only when the action is selected, but this one is called like every frame and prints it. So now we can create our behavior. Asian behavior and let's say sphere and then attach a brain component to it add the behavior that we coded for the agent to it let's execute it faster this tells you basically how often this thinks let's say five times a second 
and since you are not updating any targets, you don't need to change that. And the behavior is empty at the moment, so let's just add one action set. We don't care about the snake, it's like a folder. Let's add two of the same action. We call this one test action one, and this one test action two. Let's put the prefix of this one as two and this one as one. So one will cause the object to get red and the other will be blue because it doesn't have uh, the letter N and we check that as the condition to what about what color to choose. Now the actions cannot be scored because they do not have consideration. So let's create a consideration too. And our consideration will just return a random value between 0 and 1. Uh, usually an action score is calculated by calculating all considerations and then multiplying them by each other. So um, and the important method to override for a consideration is get value. I could define public variables here too if I needed it, like public float, max range if I wanted to, or maybe just public int else. And set the default value to 30 as well. I'll not use it just, just as an exercise. And also here I could get components of the main component, like if I wanted to get the transform of the brain. I could do that if you needed it for, I don't know, distance calculations or whatever in our get value. We take get once here and put in a private variable. So. And here say t equals. If the consideration had a target, it would have been filled here. Uh, it, if it doesn't, then it's null. So now, Let's add the consideration to the action. Add it the same to both of them. So it will generate random values for both, and then whatever which is higher gets selected. And this, we are not using it, but it's here, and we can change it to whatever we want. Uh, we define it as public. Okay. And with the current selection mode, like the higher score will always win, but we could choose from the random top end, like if you had 20 actions from the top five or whatever. Let's execute it and see. Okay. So it's working and we can check it in the debugger as well. Now, if you wanted one of these to execute more often, what we could do was to basically, let's say we want to execute the second one more often. We simply could, instead of a linear curve uh, like this, change the values toward one much faster. So add a key here and then most of the time this will have an output value. Much closer to one. Now most of the time this should get selected just because it will like convert most numbers to something very high. But still, once in a while, the other one gets selected too, but you, as you can see much less often. And the reason is the curve of the consideration, the number, random number generated is still almost similar. Now if 
one of these needed a target, you would simply, in one of the considerations or more of them which needed them, would check the box, need targets, and automatically then uh, targets would be considered for that action and it would be supplied via target. The way that it worked was that update targets should have filled the list of potential targets for the action, like in your implementation of test action. And here you have multiple things regarding the target, like clear targets, this add target, uh, and remove target, and then the selected target would be in the chosen target variable uh, whenever the action was executed. And how it works is that, let's say you add five targets here, then when calculating the score for each of them, one score would be calculated with all considerations which are targeted, and then mm, the best one, like the highest one, would be compared with other actions. So each target action would be compared with other actions only using its best target and best score. Uh, and despite the fact that I made the blue action much more common, if I change the selection mode here, it doesn't make sense here, but for many games which require more variety, it does. So we didn't change the priority of these actions, so it doesn't matter which one we choose, but if we say choose from the top two here, then almost randomly one of them will be selected each time because like each action basically doesn't matter which one has the highest score. However, because we have momentum for the already selected action, uh, when something is selected, it will continue for a good amount of time, but as you can see, the red one is selected more often now that we change the selection criteria. Uh, I don't want to make this tutorial more complex, but we'll have more complex ones and better samples in the future. But I hope that this helped you to see it's really easy to create actions and considerations and you can do whatever you want in this. So for example, if I wanted, I could create like new game objects in, in the update. Like, uh, let's say, let's create this. Let's get a cube and then that zero and then find the value star twenty then zero. It should create a tower of cubes uh, for us. And let's also use the same logic to set the color of the cube, but vice versa. So the blue one creates red ones and the red one creates blue ones. The yeah, blue action would create red cubes and the red action would create blue cubes. So what I would do is that to basically um, negate the condition here. So if it doesn't contain and, and I could like get the colors as public variables in the action if I wanted to. So in here I could say okay public color action color. But I'm just declaring it to show you I'm not using it in the code. And now the actions have a color. Actually let's use it why not? Let's Use the color that we desire. Right. 
think I'm okay. So let's go back to the code and here set the color of these two to the color. And let's increase this to 200 so a nice little cover will be created. Let's change the scale of the cube in here as well and let's rotate some of them a bit. I don't know how the hell on earth it will look, but let's see. It should probably look pretty dumb because I am creating them in, inside each other basically. And I'm creating lots of objects every frame so the frame rate should drop. And as you can see they are different colors. So yeah, that's it. I hope it helps you understand the system better.